Hello and welcome to Tips and Tricks chapter of this essential course. We briefly spoke about time stretch node. And we discovered that we can alter the speed of playback, so let's say of particles or any other generator in Notch. But notice that time stretch actually has two modes, speed and absolute time. So where does absolute time come handy? Well, if you have a FBX model, let's say of a human running, and you want to slow it down or control the pace of running, you could easily pipe this imported 3D scene via time stretch. So now we have control over speed, but at the same time, instead of speed, you might as well control the absolute time. So all of a sudden, I have a handle that allows me to choose which frame should be rendered or how should it be played back. So I can use modifiers here. Let's say envelope. All of a sudden, I'm in complete control of the playback. I find this feature really useful. Sometimes when you need to set in triggers for animations or set in some kind of an interaction and you have an animated FBX model, time stretch and absolute time is probably the best way to go. So in this tips and tricks section, we'll talk about select child. Let me quickly rig it up and then I will explain you where does it come handy in day-to-day -day notch use. So select child node allows you to choose whichever the indexed operator should be rendered on screen at what time. Now to illustrate this, I'm going to get three shape 3Ds. So let's say this is our number one. I'm going to make sure that we see things better by enabling the grid. I'm going to make a copy of it. This is our number two, just kind of offset it in space. And this is our number three. There we go. I'm connecting them all to the root via shortcut control R. So if I connect all of these three shape 3Ds via select child, all of a sudden in a select child index, I can choose whichever the one is to be rendered on screen via the slider. Here as well, I can use math, continuous, or any other modifier to drive this selection. This workflow is extremely handy when it comes to cameras. Let's bring this running FBX model so we have some kind of an object to focus on. In this case, I think I want this to be in animation. Let's say this shot right here. We have a camera. I'm going to right click, go for camera options, set to current view. There, one camera is already looking to him from the side. I'm going to push it a little bit aside. I'm going to make a copy of it, connect it to the root, and I'm going to pan somewhere else, for instance, to the top. Yeah, somewhere right here. So the second camera, camera options, set to current view. Great. I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to make a third camera. Maybe the third one could be just behind the running guy, right there. So now I have three cameras. I'm going to disconnect them all from the root and I'm going to connect them all via select child node. And if I hit zero now to make sure that I'm actually looking through rendering cameras, all of a sudden, as I slide the slider, I'm swapping the camera one, two, and three. Now notice that select child node index is calculating from zero. So your first camera is always zero. And stacking order is very important here. So if you restack those cameras, all of a sudden, the index order changes as well. So this workflow befits everything related to 3D, but what if you want to swap something like video sources? For that, we have a separate node that fulfills a similar task, and that's multiplex sources. I'm going to further illustrate that by outputting multiplex sources to, let's say, image to the output. Let's connect it to the root. Now let's feed in multiplex sources to the image 2D. Multiplex sources at this time has no sources whatsoever. So let's bring in several. In this case, I'm going to start with the first one, band Shutterstock, and I will pipe it into the first input source. There we go. Then I'm going to grab another, let's say base. This is how the base one looks, great. And I'm going to pipe it to the very same input. And I'm going to grab a third one, dark sky loop again to the same input. So 
In a multiplex sources, we have a source index, just like in the select child node. So all of a sudden, we can choose whichever the video should be rendered at what time. I'm going to disable the grid, we don't really need that now. So here too, Matt continues envelope modifier or any other modifier could be driving the selection of a specific video that should be rendered out. So to top this off, uh, there's one more node that I would like to introduce in this setup is layer precomp. So layer precomp allows you to call out any other layer from your layer list. In this case, we have two layers. So the first one is time stretch. This is the previous setup we've tried out. So we can actually call it out in the select child layer. So I'm going to press on the layer precomp. I'm going to pipe it into the same input, multiplex sources. And via layer precomp, I'm going to choose the very layer that I want to render. So in this case, time stretch. Then in the multiplex sources, let's just make sure that we are in the index that allows us to see the layer precomp. And there we are. Now we are rendering a time stretch layer. Obviously, we can even set the render width and height should we choose so and optimize memory use on idle. Now, I would always recommend to tick that on as now we are running both of the layers at the same time. Now, if we had more layers, they would be all running continuously unless you tick on optimize, optimize memory use on idle. And then only the one that is called out via multiplex or via output is the one that is being rendered. Right. I hope these uh, tips and tricks comes handy to you in your daily not use.